Hi everyone. I don't know who's here, who's not here. We'll find out. We'll find out how is everybody? How is everyone? Oh my gosh. Maybe everybody is out eating at restaurants. Could be, could be, could be. Oh, I see a person. I see somebody. Oh my God. Hey, how are you? Hey, 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 how are you? Hey, hey, hey. Oh my goodness, right? It's, uh, I don't even, oh look, this is why I'm screaming. Look at this. I have these on. I never take these off. Now I'm taking them off. Craziness. Oh, that feels much better. I started that with, <laughs> with my AirPods on. My ear pods on. How are you guys? Oh, from New Mexico. Stella. <laughs> I know. I was going to tell you. I don't. I'm the bearer of insanity in my house, right? So last night, well, I was feeling fine till last night that I understood. I got. Oh, Lila's mommy called me, and baby Jack had a little baby Jack rascal accident. Um, he because they got a gate and they got to shut the gate. So um, yeah, Deanna is the best, exactly. Um, but they shut the gate. I didn't shut the gate. Kenna pulled in and Baby Jack saw that gate open and he went running. I know Baby Jack, who's an Aquarius, by the way. Uh, I don't know his time of rising because they got him from somebody that already had him and I don't, they didn't get him from like wherever his mommy was. But um yeah, well, Baby Jack's alive, but what's weird, it's the same injury that Keith had. It's the same thing. So, like, Keith would have not had a leg to operate on. It would have been a missing thing, but Baby Jack, unfortunately, or fortunately, he can get surgery. I know, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I just was with him. I just saw him. I took him some bacon and cheese biscuits. He didn't want them, and Zuli didn't want them either. Hi, you guys. I'm like looking to see what's going on. It's just weird. I know, poor baby Jack. He's not very happy right now. He's very, very cute, but his little leg, Kenna, that little girl carries him up with the little sling and then puts him on his front feet and then he has to go outside and pee or whatever it is he does, but she's got to hold his back legs up. He got hit by a car yesterday. I'm looking to see what the heck was going on. I'm so crazy. I'm like looking at, I don't even know what day this is. I don't know what day this is. Uh, hi, you guys. Um, yeah, it's Mars retrograde already, and we've got the Mercury retrograde next week on the 14th, followed by a new moon um, on the 16th, but I'm looking to see what, I don't even know really what I'm looking to see right now, really. Um, this is Saturday, so that happened Friday, so that happened in Cancer, so little baby Jack, so he ran for the gate, he ran for the gate, he saw Kenna's car coming in. And she gets out and she shuts the gate and he ran like, like a little beast right out there and just kind of watched it just like this. And the car hit him and flew and he's got like a little punctured lung. Um, oh, I believe in witchcraft. He's got a little punctured lung. Oh, Jackie, stop. Jackie, thank you so much, you guys. Jackie's like, it's going to baby Jack. It's all going to baby Jack now. First baby Keith and then baby Jack. But um, baby Keith didn't have the option for surgery. Unfortunately, baby Jack does. But I was ridiculous. They took him to a vet and at $2,400. The discrepancy in payment was for, I'm going to read you this. They gave Kenna some cockamamie, cockamamie thing, which is absurd. But like, for example, okay, examination emergency can be anywhere from Oh, it's $166. They don't do, they don't discrep, discriminate against that. Intensive care per hour is $264, $264 up to $528. But they don't tell you in between and they don't tell you exactly like what, you know, what your intensive care is for your dog. So, this was probably like, ten, I don't know, I called Deanna maybe like 10 last night to tell her, talking to Lori, so I'm guessing it's about 10. Mm. No, they didn't set his leg because he has to have surgery, but he can't have surgery there. It's too expensive. It's $10,000. So Ken is phoning every vet. I mean, all of you guys were so great. Lori, Libra Lori, and um, yeah, no, he's got a fentanyl patch on. Lila is visiting Grandma Jen. I mean, Nana Jen. So she's over there. So it's okay. I don't know if she knows. I don't think she knows um, yet. 
unless she's watching this, in which case I'm sorry. Okay, so then the estimate of injectable medication for a 40 pound dog is anywhere from $190 per injection to $380 per injection. Yes, and I know the cancer, I know, right? No, I haven't met Isaac Gappy. Where did that come from? And I'm not gonna meet him right now. <laughs> no, I didn't meet him. Um, anyway, uh, then we have, okay, I don't know, whatever, medicines. But yeah, Baby Jack, when I went over to see him, I was, you know, rubbing him and everything. I was unaware that he had a fentanyl patch. Um, I know, right? Daylight robbery, exactly. He had a fentanyl patch. Fentanyl, you know? So like I had to warn the neighborhood kids, don't steal the dog's patch. <laughs> Get it? Because everybody on the fucking fentanyl, right? Um, okay, so anyway, here is baby Jack. He doesn't look so bad there, but you can see he, he was fine. See his little leg in the back? That's a fentanyl patch. That's his little thing. So they, no, you, well, not if the dog gets injured, for God's sakes. But yeah, this is where he hurt it. I don't know if you can see, but it's the, it's the, the leg without the blue thing on it. But it's right up here. It's broken, like right up here. So this is broken. So when she carries him out, it kind of hangs. And I'm like, oh, God. Um, so it's broken. It's fixable. I know. He got hit by a car. He got hit by a car. So he didn't want any of the crackers, but now he's sleeping. He's asleep. I know there is a GoFundMe. Yes, what it's on. Kenneth set it up. I put it on my Facebook. That's so nice. Um, of course, when I donate to the GoFundMe for Baby Jack, I put the wrong name. I put. <laughs> I meant to say Sloan, and then for Baby Jack, but I put Sloan Baby. I'm like, who does this? Anyway, he'll know it's Grandma Sloan, um, or maybe he won't. I don't know. I don't know how that works for dogs. Well, he recognized his brain is good. He recognized everything. Oh, no. Hit by a car. See? Why did they get his hit by cars? It bothers me so much. Okay, here it is. Um, it's under... Okay. Uh, I'm just looking here as I'm making noises. Uh, <laughs> weird noises. Okay, forget that. Okay, there it is. It's... Um, It's uh, right there. Can you see that? It's baby Jack. It's Jack the puppy needs surgery. Jack the puppy needs surgery. Organized by McKenna Horton. Um, so she put Jack the, Jack the puppy needs surgery. That's it. Yeah, he's sleeping now. He's drugged out of his mind. Um, every time Zuli, the little chihuahua, came whipping in, he tried to get up, and then, I mean, even when I came in, he tried to get up, and when Kenna left, he tries to get up. But he can't really get up because he can't stand on that. So he can stand kind of on the one with the fentanyl, but not on the other side, and then he just kind of falls down. I'm sure he'll be okay. I'm glad I saw him because it was making me crazy there. Here's little baby Jack. There he is. He's got a little harness around his middle because if she has to carry him out, she they did not put a cast on it because until he has surgery... And you've got five days, according to the vet, five days from um, five days from when they break it to do the surgery. Yeah, I was doing some Reiki on him. Poor baby Jack. He's like his daddy, Jason. He's like stubborn and he goes running and whipping out into freaking traffic. I know, baby Jack. Baby Jack had the same thing happen that Keithy had, but baby Jack wasn't on a motorcycle. But yeah, my heart broke because I was like, what the hell? The day after Keithy passed away, when I was at the house, I came outside. Jason had parked to the to my passenger door. And so I parked in the first spot. Jason had parked in the second spot. And so I walked out to my passenger door. This is one day after Keith died. And there was a pine tree. I showed um, Lori. Lori and I were just talking. Libra Lori and I were just talking about this morning. But I showed... Um, Oh, great. Yeah, I think I, it should help. I send it out on Friday, so you should get it soon. I have a tracking number, for God's sakes, because all my stuff goes missing. Kelowna, there you go. All my stuff goes missing out of the post office, whatever. But the day after Keithy died, um, they're going out to the right side of the car, the passenger side. So between Jason and I, as in when Jason had pulled up, right, Jason had gotten out and he didn't see this. I went out maybe an hour later, went out to the car and there was a pine, um, 
a pine tree, like a twig with pine needles and there was a dead rat attached to it. Now listen to this, this is no joke. So this is what I'm, when people talk about witchcraft, this is what I was saying. I almost brought it in the house and went, who the fuck did this? But anyway, there was a, um, like a pine branch with a rat attached to it and its legs were all mangled behind it. Well, that's what happened to Keith. That just happened to baby Jack. And that was right between mine and Jason's car. So I took pictures of it that day. And then I sent it back to the sender. But you don't know. Energetically, I know a rat. I've been seeing rats. I know. But it was it was a rat with its from the like bottom of its. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, I just did my hair. Do you guys like it? Jana did it. Jana did it help me help me do it in the back because I wanted to keep my natural hair color. So this was getting really rooty. So we did it. I needed her because to help me. Anyway, so I did that. But yeah, so the um the thank you so much, you guys, for the super chats. Cranbrook, um, yeah, so the the rat was between our cars. So they will drop stuff. Also, people will give you gifts and it's like a loaded gift. Yeah, I know. No, people people do all kinds of things. It doesn't matter because God isn't going to let anything happen that's not supposed to, even if somebody dies. I really believe that because you're not going to be taken off unless it's, you know, if you want to live and you're all broken, then that's one thing. So um, someone's life just to be ruined. Um, oh, no, I, I, I know. I'm not saying it's not real. I know curses are real. Generational curses, people curses people who put curses on other people, people who ill intend, all kinds of stuff. Oh, if I, I know that. I know that. And they always tell on themselves. So I definitely know them. Uh, know it. Know him. <laughs> I know who's doing it. No, I know it. Wow. Year of the metal rat. No, that's what was left. And Keith was a metal pig sheep. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. There's several ways to break a curse, but first and foremost, remember this. Anytime... And you can't stop anyone from doing anything. I mean, short of taking them off the planet or whatever. You can't do that because, I mean, what are you going to do? Don't curse me and then they're not going to curse you. No, they're going to do what they want because people are jealous. People are envious. People who are, yeah, I, I put a shield up around my family. Um, of course, baby Jack was a rascal and he ran out the front gate. So he wanted to get out, but he's got a huge backyard. There's there's goats next door, there's her, um, horses, there's three other dogs, there's kitty cats. Like he lives on a farm. So him and mommy Kenna live on a farm. So it's very nice. Um, so baby Jack doesn't have to make a, um, a run for the street, but he wanted to get out the gate. See, baby Jack's an Aquarius and Aquarius is love freedom. So baby Jack was like, freedom, <laughs> like Braveheart and took the hell right off. Kenna couldn't even stop him. She was running for the gate. Like she pulled her car in and then she just it was a smidgen open and out he went and it was almost like timing however mars is men it's in aries mars rules machinery war um and it's in the sign of aries and it's going backwards car accidents just for that reason i don't know baby jack's whole chart so i'm not sure like i always bounce around a lot you guys i gotta stop um but you know, I don't know that, but when you're talking about like generational curses, you still, you, you have to understand like what, um, first of all, you have to understand and believe that it can happen. Even if you think it can't happen to you, it doesn't mean that they can't get into the thinking of your family, your friends, your life, and kind of systematically, you know, set up things. I mean, there is a reverberation of energy and that is for sure. That is for sure. Um, olive oil and every door on your home to banish evil. I do all kinds of things. I have selenite. I send it back. Here's what I was going to tell you. Even if you think it's like some bitch down the street sending you black magic, some, some whatever bitch ass woman, bitch ass man, whatever. Right. Um, so let's say you feel like you're getting intention sent at you that way. You can't send it back to who you think it is because it might not be them. Right. So what you need to do is actually send it to God and ask God to do with it what he wills. So it's not you saying, I think it's, you know, Susie down the street because she doesn't like me and she wants my husband and that bitch did it, right? So, because that would be the normal thing to think. You cannot do that. What you do is you send the spell, the curse, um, 
Yeah, GoFundMe does take a percentage. She sure does, but whatever. She just needs to get her dog into surgery. So, um, of course, yes, GoFundMe does. I think it's 15%. I think on Keith's memorial um, for the bench, I think it's been 15%, which is a lot of money for sure. For each person donating, it's a lot of money. I mean, however, they are allowing the service for the word to get out. So it's kind of pay for play kind of thing. I am so grateful for the GoFundMe because we're able to get Keith a bench. I am so grateful. You have no idea how grateful I am for that. Absolutely every ounce of that money has been used towards Keith's bench, which we're talking, the kid's name is Chance. His name is Chance. He's obviously very young, probably under 30. I'm thinking from his voice. Anyway, Chance is the one. He's coming out to meet me in the park on the 20th or 21st or 23rd. I can't remember which. One of those, when I talk to him, I'll look at my email, but he comes and then with the city planners, believe this or not, we got to find a spot in the park, right? So it's got to be, I mean, you can't just like sit it in the middle of the driveway just because you want it to do that, right? But um, so there's tons of ants on, the ants are out, you know it's going to rain, the ants are out. So we do that and then he dropped this bomb on me, you'll love this. He's like, yes, we have the city, the parks and rec people coming out, but, but we have <laughs> Garcetti's office has to approve. It has to go through his office. I'm like, oh God, I hope he's not watching my freaking YouTube. <laughs> oh, it was making me laugh, right? Um, oh, vet school. Yes, I will. I'll tell Canada to check that vet schools. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, I'm telling her, they spent $2,400 $2, last night um, for baby Jack. $2,400 in one day. Who exactly can fucking afford that? Like, um, I don't know. Like, wow. Uh, that was like weird. Oh, it's raining at your house? Um, yeah, I don't like the rain. But yeah, vodka would be good. But I don't drink. But yeah, so baby Jack, anyway, baby Jack, I mean, he knew who I was. So his brain isn't damaged. And UC, US, UC Davis, yes, I'm going to tell her, you need dog insurance. Uh, yeah, they need dog insurance. Um, but getting back to like spells and curses, when somebody does, because there's a lot of people that hate people, like I'm guilty of it. Well, I don't hate them, but like sometimes I dislike them immensely with a f fervent passion for almost directed towards hatred towards certain people, like the person that ran my Keithy off the road, things like that. Like, it's very hard for me to um, <laughs> be spiritual. Sorry, I'm human in a human body. Because some people write me, they're like, well, that's not very spiritual. I'm like, do I look like I have wings on my back? No, I'm a bitch from Canada in a human body. Okay, I'm not evolved or I wouldn't be on planet prison, prison planet, whatever this is. But when somebody is sending something at you or you see a series of events that happen, okay, you have to send it back to the sender. But just because your opinion of who sent it at you, you think because you had an argument with Joe Blow and you think because they don't like you that it's this person, it might not be. So you might, in effect, when you send it back to somebody who it is not, you may be cursing them, <laughs> You may be cursing them. So you send it back to God and ask God to take care of it. So when I'm sending it back or doing a banishing candle to send it back, what I do is I say to God, "Do with the, I'm sending this back to where it came from. You do with it as you will. In other words, I'm not naming the sender because I don't really know. Oh, Perth, Ontario, getting to be fall out there um, because I don't really know who sent what or did what, right? So I don't actually know. So I will say that, but it's, um, you have to be a little bit careful. Oh my God, Jackie, what the hell? I guess I owe Jackie. <laughs> I was going to say something really rude. Thank you so much, Jackie. You're cracking me up. I owe Jackie. <laughs> I owe Jackie a dinner date. Except she's a chick, so I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's so rude. Jackie, honestly, thank you. I'm going to tell Kenna. Um, I'm going to tell little Kenna. Because I know we're the family. I, I literally, I don't even know what to say. Because first it was with Keith. But I'm telling you. So wait, what? You had to put your dog down yesterday? Oh, God, no. Um, no, no, no. No, that's awful. 
I hate that. I didn't want to put baby Jack down. That's what I was, that's what I was saying to Jason texting. Then he called me last night and said, no, we're not doing that. We're just taking him out of the vet and taking him somewhere else. So thank you guys for the super chat so much. Oh my God. Thank you. It's been probably one of the most fucked up years, except I will tell you yesterday was, okay, today's the 10th, right? Let me look at my phone because I'm ridiculous and I don't even know what day it is. Um, I think it's the 10th, right? How stupid am I? I think it is the 10th. Oh, and the tram is open for tram pass holders, meaning the ones that buy the yearly passes. Yes, that's me because I run up to the top and take the tram back. I don't run. I gasp and huff for air. Anyway, it's open. Yes, it is, but it's still 100 degrees out there. Uh-huh. So you got to leave it like 3 in the morning through the desert in the dark to beat the heat. You got to beat the heat. Um, yeah, so it's the 10th today. Anyway, on the 9th, um, on the 9th, gulping again, on the 9th of October, 24 years ago, was when Keithy's brother passed away. Keithy took his first, this is, this happened 20, I mean, I'm, maybe I'm on a 24-year cycle, I don't know. 24 years ago, Jimmy passed away on the day that Keith took his first steps, okay? And then after that happened, the parents died systematically, four of them, well, no, three of them. Um, the in-laws and then one of one of my parents. And then we had a grandbaby die. I say we, John's grandbaby died. And then um, the dog died. So we had all of that boom, 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 energetically like that. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you. Um, I don't even know what to say. Jackie ought to stop. I mean, I'm so, I'm so grateful, but Jackie, <laughs> I'm just going to give it back to you. I'm going <laughs> to... Jackie does the beautiful t-shirts, which I keep lying and saying I'm calling, but I am. Um, I know. So that happened 24 years ago, and baby Jack got hit on that day. So 24 years later, and Keith, it's he was 24. So there must be something with the 24, which is a 6. So I don't really understand that. I'm not really sure what that's about. But um, just to show you a picture, a very cute... Well, this is bad. I'm cataloging all of our pictures I'm archiving them I'm sending them to a place and my head's spinning with boxes full of pictures anyway this isn't the best but that is Jimmy with little Jason that is um that's more than 24 years ago so it's like 26 years ago or something anyway that's baby Jason Keithy wasn't even born in this picture and that's Jimmy so that's um that's what he looked like and he would be turning um 50 in December 9th, he would be 53. Can you imagine? Wait, what? Who passed away yesterday? Wait, who? What? Wait, somebody passed away. I just saw that. Um, yeah, he was a handsome young man. He was super cute. Yeah, those, those boys in the family are beautiful. That was baby Jason. Um, yeah, that's 24 years ago. And then Keithy is with Jimmy and Jason's here, and then baby Jack got hit on that time. So that's ridiculous. Um, yeah, baby Jack, I know it's really, East Coast loves me. I'm from the East Coast. Oh my God, wait, I got to turn on that. I'm saying the air, I almost said the air conditioner. I meant the air conditioner. Um, anyway, it's a weird energy, but what you're, when you're talking about curses with people, people always go, well, you know the Italians curse, right? They spit and throw salt over their back. Well, they throw salt because salt cures energy. So the quickest way to get rid of things is a salt salt bath with coconut oil scrub. Um, Baby Jack got hit by a car yesterday, for real. Ridiculous. Um, yeah, Jimmy and Jason were dark. Keithy was light. Keithy had the strawberry hair. Keithy was so cute. Keithy is my cutie. Um, okay, wait, who died? Tell me. Oh, your aunt passed away. I'm Libra Riot. Wait. Wait, Libra with Aries rising. Well, I'm sorry about that. You must be in quite a pickle right now. Um, wait. Oh, John Lennon. Oh, John Lennon, 10-9. There you go. John, I thank you. I forgot when, I remember when John Lennon passed, but I forgot. Mm. Keithy is Irish. Well, we're all Irish in the family. 
Jimmy and Jason tan like fiends. Hey, Jimmy loved to tan. He looked almost like Italian at the end of his life. Um, I'm Italian. He looked like almost like a darker skinned person, not Italian, like some other kind of skin, darker skinned person from the tanning. Keithy and I can't really tan because we get this. We get like, I, you know, all, this is just all tan. It's all like weird tan. Yeah. Salt bath, um, December. Oh, December in 1980. Thank you. December born on this on fuck. What is this? What month is this? October 9th. I got you. Died in December. It was John Lennon and then it was John Bonham or it was John Bonham and John Lennon. And then it was also somebody else. Um, John Lennon, John Bonham. And wait, Saturday Night Live. Come on, guys. What's his name? It totally went out of my head. I ate too much at dinner. Um, oh, my God. What's his name? Belushi, thank you. John Lennon, John Bonham, and John Belushi. Let's see how right I am. I think from 80 to 82 in there. And Belushi had to speedball it up, right? Did you know, <coughs> excuse me, John Belushi was, um, mm, now I forgot it, Albanian. Albanian, right? <coughs> excuse me sacrifices. Well, I'm sure Belushi was. <laughs> now I'm coughing. <clears throat> I hope it's not the crotch 19 because I was out in public today without my mask on. Shh. I was. I was. Let's see when. Okay. When did John, I think Belushi was in, um, 90, 82, 82, March 5th, 82. There y'all, there you go. And let's see John Lennon. They're all Johns. John Lennon was 1980. You're right. December 8th, 1980. And then we have John Bonham. John Henry Bonham. I'm sorry. Big fan. Big fan. Okay. Big fan of John Bonham. John Bonham. Oh. Okay, so John Bonham was September 25th, 1980. So Belushi kind of blew it out by two years. But yeah, it was John Bonham. It was John Bonham and John Lennon in one year. And wait, John Lennon. When was John? Or John Denver. What's wrong with me? Um, John Denver. Let's see. I never cared for John Lem Denver. I always thought he was like a serial killer behind the scenes. Like that nice, wholesome look on his face. I was like, eh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Yeah, he was a good singer. Um, he just looked like uh, like your average next door. He looked like, what's his name? Eddie Haskell to me. Okay, no, he didn't die till October 12th, 97. So he did not die till, yeah, 97. And he was, seems like he might have been, oh, he was born in Roswell, New Mexico. Da, 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 put on scary music here. He was an alien. He kind of has that like, like, goofy face, you know, but the, it wasn't a plane crash. He forgot to put gas in his plane. I don't think he did. They probably siphoned it and said that. That's what they did. I mean, because who forgot? Well, I forgot to put, um, oh my God, I love the nails. Thank you. Poltergeist purple. I think you just said that. Yeah, I love the blue nails. Anyway, I'm sure that, I mean, do you think he forgot to really like soup up the plane? Like I'm going to go up in the sky. I'm going to forget gas. It's not quite the same as like running out of gas on the road, right? He was, but they said he didn't have gas. Chris Farley. Okay. Chris Farley. Remember him? <clears throat> as if he wasn't on meth or a bunch of meth. He really reminds me of every homeless guy on the street. The way he, like the way that, you know, gas leak. Okay. There you go. Oh, gas leak. See, someone probably siphoned it. Exactly. Let's look up Chris Farley. Chris Farley, I think, was in the 90s. I don't know. It's been so long. Chris Farley. Chris Farley looked like he was just going to bang up. Like, inside his... Chris Farley looked like he was exceptionally uncomfortable in his body, and his energy was just bashing, bashing, bashing like this. Um, yeah, no, he didn't look comfortable. He looked drugged, and he looked like... Um, Oh, a boozer. He looked like he was high. He's, what we were watching was somebody who was out of their fucking mind. Um, yeah, drug overdose. Okay, let's see what he had. <laughs> His face is funny. It's like, <laughs> he's like goofy. 
Okay, so he was a February 15th, 64, and he died on Keithy's birthday, 97, December 18th. Um, well, look at this. I don't even know. Oh, yeah, okay. So it was, it was um, what do you call it when the veins in the body um, get really tight? Uh, it's like with a stroke. So they're calling it that. But he had cocaine. It's a cocaine and morphine overdose. Do we really need to resort to that kind of drugging of ourselves? Like, what are you running from when you do that? Aneur no, it wasn't an aneurysm. It's atherosclerosis. So when the veins, like, like you have a stroke, when the veins get, yeah, artery disease. Thank you. Um, a narrowing of the arteries. Um, he's buried in Madison, Wisconsin, and he's got a shit ton of brothers. Um, got a shit ton of brothers. But he had like a serious addiction, like a crazy ass addiction. And keep note, yeah, uppers and downers, speedballing. Do you remember it? <laughs> oh, is it just me that remembers that? Anyway, high blood pressure. Yeah, there, that one, atherosclerosis. I can't say it. John Candy grew up right, had a home around the corner from where I lived in the group home in Newmarket. So his kids were, I mean, he had a farm in Newmarket. So John Candy, he just died from a heart attack. I think he was 42, right? I think, 42. Let's look up. John Candy, I, and up comes, there you go, John Candy. Uh, let's see, John Candy. Oh, he was a Halloween baby, so he was October 31st. Totally doesn't strike me like a Scorpio, so you know. Um, I thought you said morning from Perth, Australia. I thought you said morphine from Perth, Australia. I was like, what? Um, yeah, okay, and he died March 4th, 94, in 1994 at the age of 43, and he died from, yeah, they don't really say, his name was John Franklin Candy. I know he had two kids, I remember that. Um, heart attack, heart attack. But who knows what led to the heart attack? Which, by the way, if we're going to ban things, we might, well, it says heart attack, but maybe he choked in the middle. I love John Candy. I read heart attack, yeah. Um, I'm thinking how how people don't treat their bodies right. Like, why don't we ban that? Let's start with Mickey D's. Let's start with all the fattening things that people do. And let's put an end to that, right? Yeah, I'm sure he did die from being David Spade's best friend. I have no doubt about that. I always wondered. Now, I'm very shallow, apparently, according to myself at this point. But, um... No, Baby Jack is not dead. Only Keith passed away, but Baby Jack lived. Um, yeah, Uncle Buck, I remember. Yeah, I love planes, trains, and automobiles. That is like one of my guilty pleasures. I find it hilarious. David Spade, okay, what is he, five foot two? No offense to anybody who's five foot two, five foot four, whatever. But I never understood the appeal of that guy. He was always, I know, he was always getting all of these girls and all of this. And you look at him and you're like, never, um, never, never, right? So you're like, nah, I don't know why I want to do that. But yeah, I don't know. Let's look up David Spade's birthday. Um, yeah, I don't like him. I never did like him. He thinks he's clever and he's not even funny, but... It's not for me. I didn't hire him and, you know, but is he really a guy? I, I I don't know what he is. Okay, no, but you're a girl. I don't know what he is and I shouldn't say that. That's mean. But nothing about him said to me, okay, I don't know about you. Um, I don't know about you understanding anything like when you're a little kid, but when you see movie stars or actors or people on TV, like I thought it was a visual medium. So when I see people up there that like have faces for radios, I'm like, I don't understand because it's not about that. We've been taught something different. That's the reason, but I could never understand it. So for me, it was always very odd. It was always very odd, very, very odd. Yeah, he he thinks he's cool, but let's see. It's not going to say his, his height. Um, he's born July 22nd, 64, so he's 56. Uh, one child, one children. One ch I don't know, girl or guy, I'm not sure. No idea. Um, hmm. Yeah, I have no idea. But his personal life, let's see. 
Like all of these like really attractive women go for him. Why? Why? Do you have no self-esteem? Like he's not even whatever. I should stop. I should stop while I'm ahead. Stop, Sloan. Stop. Edit. Okay. <laughs> I'm editing. Oh, I know what he is. I, no, money is not enough. There's plenty of beautiful women out there that will not go for money. Sometimes you can't uh, sometimes you can't, uh, there's no amount of money. The heart doesn't think money. He's odd. Try Luciferian. <laughs> uh, yeah, I sent the selenite and the obsidian on Friday, I believe. And in fact, I can tell you when I sent it because I have your receipt in my thing here. My little purse wallet. I have it right here. I can tell you because I only sent one out. I've got more to send out, of course. Ooh, yeah, this is what I'm doing on YouTube. I'm looking up the receipt. <laughs> um, I sent it out on, it's due on 10-13. So you should get it on 10-13. This is what it says. And I believe it is, yeah, 10-13. So it's coming by priority mail and you should have it. It should be beautiful. I hate giving up my obsidians. I, I start to sell them and I'm like, I don't know if I can give them up. They're my friends. They're my friends. Oh, wait. Picture of the evening skyline from Palm Springs. Oh, my God. I'll look. I so love it up there. Uh, yes, I sell crystals on the website. I opened a few up because Rachel let me into the crystal shop to pick up supplies. And I was so excited because I live for that. That's all I live for, really. That's about the excitement of my life. That hiking and maybe one day... I don't know. I can't even say that. I'm just in the moment. Okay, I think politicians attract flies because they're reptilian. <laughs> That's the funniest thing. Jeff Goldblum's a fly, right? I mean, I was like, oh my God, Jeff, <laughs> Jeff Goldblum is out <laughs> flying around on Pence's head. <laughs> what the hell? Um, yes, so <laughs> uh, I was just like so excited. But anyway, uh, I got my raw. Oh, you got them yesterday. Okay, see, Jackie, I wasn't. I think I mailed yours at the same time. You got them quick. Or maybe I did it. I don't know. Maybe you have. I don't know. I'm glad you got them. I hope you got them. I hope they're not broken. Yes, she looks like a clone man. Wendy W there. But let's get back to the energy of things. Because to tap into the energy of things, it's very different. When we are... Yeah, well, so is, what's her clown nephew's name? The clown nephew of the woman you just mentioned, clown shoes, clown, the, the clown posse, the Pelosi clown posse. <laughs> people hate me when I say that, you know, people are like, at least he voted for her, at least she's there. And I'm like, are you people crazy? I don't even understand. I don't even understand. Yes, he's a, he's a clown and a clone. He's a clowning clone. Okay, so I'm going to focus in one second. I'm just, forgive me for doing this. Um, just answering one text back just to see. Just to see. Okay, so <laughs> they're part of the clown posse. Swamp creatures. I don't even think they're swamp. Here, here's the thing. Here's what I said like straight out. And I really believe this. If you tell me and you are a government official, first of all, who died and left you my boss? Even if you are sick, that's on you. No, I'm not a carrier. No, I'm not a carrier. And I'm not responsible for your health until they take down every McDonald's, Mickey D's, or every negative food connotation, Taco Bell, whatever the injected. I used to have a friend that owned a Taco Bell. They plump that meat up in the tacos. Now, I'm not denying I've eaten Taco Bell, but it is condensed, uh, what do you call it? Like astronaut food when they freeze dry it. Uh, I guess freeze dry it. And then they have to inject it with a solution to make it the meat that it becomes at Taco Bell. So dehydration, thank you. And, and that's for real, okay? And I love their little um, cinnamon air pop things. And they're Pepsi. Okay, I've got a junk food addiction, but I don't go through there anymore. Because I just used to er 
order the cinnamon curls, which were chemicals completely. And look at my hair has gone cuckoo. And the Diet Pepsi. Not, not the churros, the cinnamon crunches, cinnamon crunches. So I used to do that all the time. But if you are eating food through a drive-thru in your car, right? And you are eating food that they, cinnamon twist, thank you. And you are eating food that you have to inject with a solution, then maybe you should get your fat ass out of the drive-thru or your dumb ass out of the drive-thru. Don't hate, don't hate. And maybe you should stop eating that because you are causing society tremendous problems with your health, with your high blood pressure, with your heart disease, with your oversleepingness from whatever it is you're eating, from your malnutrition, from, I'm skinny, yeah, I know, but you still should need it. But it can eat, it hardens the arteries, does all of those things. I said you're fat or dumbass. That, and I know I've got to cut out tater tots because Arlene is not eating them anymore. I don't think she texted me. We're on a tater tot ban. My point is until, until they start actually regulating what is correct to eat in order to keep your health. I can't imagine that it matters whether your face covering's on or not. So we went to dinner in Burbank. Oh shit. My cards just went everywhere over the floor. We went to dinner in Burbank and it said you could order on aspartame. Exactly. What is that? Chemical. It's hard, it's hard when you have a food addiction. Yes. Well, I, I know. I totally get the food addiction. Food, I completely get it. I get it. But I'm not even picking on the food people. What I'm saying is these people in the line, don't you dare tell people not to wear their face coverings or to wear them. Don't you scold anyone else unless you stand up there and you're not doing anything where you can make yourself sick. Because quite frankly, when I walk in a restaurant and somebody is eating something that could give them a heart attack, why do I want to see that? If you are smoking weed by me, why do I have to be infected by that? Why do I have to smell your freaking weed? Why do I have to listen to your drunk conversation as you threaten to smack your girlfriend at the table next to me if you're drinking booze whatever it is i've been in all those scenarios mm. Mm. best one in this neighborhood is why do i have to put up with your crack smoking and gun shooting down the street which brings me to my next thing in our neighborhood we have three groups of people i just got a citizen citizen app message we have BLM, we have Trump people, and we have Armenian genocide people all on the same street corner protesting. They're all protesting, like all in a corner. So you can do what you want. <laughs> That's so 80s. No, they're crack smoking up here. Well, cocaine's 80s too, but that doesn't stop these fuckers from doing it, right? Uh, right, exactly. Cocaine is processed. <laughs> Um, uh, crack smoking and gun shooting. <laughs> uh, no, really, I'll show you on the Citizens app. <laughs> Honest to God, I was like, huh? What? Um, yeah, it came up. It's, it's, <laughs> oh my God, I crack up. Okay, uh, let's see. I'm looking to see vehicle collision with injuries, vehicle collision, collision, Oh, this is in Van Nuys 20 minutes ago. Woodman and Van Nuys. Fates. Shots fired. Okay. Um, vehicle. Vehicle. -er. Oh, my God. Right where they're protesting, there was a vehicle assault. Okay. So somebody drove their vehicle into somebody protesting out there. Yes. Armenian, Black Lives Matter, and Trump supporters all on one side of the street. Libra Lori called me this morning when she was going into the business up there and she said, they're all right here, here, and here. But I got a citizen's app saying that they're out protesting right now. So it's getting dark out. That's what they're doing. Uh, let me see. We have a report of man with a knife. Search for a missing teenager. That's in Silmar. Let's see this missing teenager. This was an hour ago. Let's see who this little missing teenager is. Police are searching for a missing 14-year-old girl. She was last seen this afternoon. Police describe her as Latina. Okay, well, we're in Los Angeles. We're basically in Mexico. I mean, I don't mean to be rude, but let's be serious. They're all Latina. I'm not. I'm the minority. Uh, the, the Asian people are the minority, but everybody else is Latina. So for them to say she's Hispanic, 
is an interesting, like, why don't you give me a little bit more information? Okay, she was last seen wearing glasses, a white tank top, and ripped blue jeans. Incident reported at Bradley Avenue and Sayer Drive. So that little girl is gone. Who reported it? Did they see her get into a car? I know that doesn't narrow. I know when they say Latino in Los Angeles, it's 85% Hispanic here from all over. So like, that's like a no brainer. You might as well just say that anyway. <laughs> it's a no brainer. I'm like, whatever. Exactly. Um, search for shooting suspects. That's in North Hollywood. So we've got Van Nuys. North oh, here's the protesters. Protesters gathered in the street. Let's pull up this picture of these protesters. Oh, God. Well, this looks like the Armenian genocide people. Look, and not the ones that did it, the ones that protested. However, that was like 100 years ago. So I don't know what their protesting does now because we don't want to genocide them. We're, but this is like, yeah, they're all out here. Look, this is, this is on the, the Citizens app. So they're all out doing that. Um. Oh, and there's a fire in Verdugo Woodlands, Glendale. So some moron has set a fire over there because we don't have enough problems with fire. My understanding, we don't have enough problems with that in this neck of the wood. Chicago is, oh, oh, that mayor in Chicago, that Chicago mayor, have you got, what's her name? Oh my God. She looks like a demon. Oh, L.A. is a mess. And there's still people I know who are like, no, I voted for Newsom. He's a good guy. I'm like, are you fucking him? Because I don't know why you're saying this. I can't. Oh, I want to gouge my eyes out. I can't understand it. See, oh, Lightfoot, Lori Lightfoot. Thank you. Oh, my God. Right? That woman, number one, should not. And I'm going to say this. I'm really going to say this. If you're going to run a city and you're going to put legislation on your citizens, which by which by the way, they hire you, okay? You don't rule them, okay? Forget that. But if you're gonna put legislation like a loser, cause you're a loser, if you want your, your, your people to wear their face coverings, you are a loser, but you won't stop the shooting of children crossing the street in your city. What is that? There are children and, and they say that, what, because she's a black woman, she's not a racist? She's not helping the black children that cross the street and get shot. It's awful. I have never, ever. You know what? And I have no respect for anybody. You don't, you're not, if you're going to decide upon yourself that you think you can rule human beings, she is the walking dead. It's a disgusting. I expect some kind of like, um, a uh, troll to come out, like like to split apart, and it's like <laughs> like this to come out of her. Those eyes. Why is that woman ruling anybody? She can't dress properly. She doesn't brush or clean herself up. Why is she do? Why why are people listening to her? Don't you understand? Doesn't anybody understand? Like people go, oh, you know, don't be shallow, don't judge. Well, if you don't put yourself together. And you're going to go out there and rule people? You at least had better wash your face and get rid of those bags under your eyes. She is a troll. Because those bags tell me you're doing something that's not good. If you have a, um, what is it, terminal illness that makes you look like that, then you need to say that. But all of these health people in Los Angeles look like they fell out. One lady looks like she fell out of a Doritos bag. The other one looks like she came out of the Crypt Keeper's grave, Okay. What is that? Why are we listening to you? I'm not listening to you. I am not listening to you. You don't take care of yourself, number one. You don't take care of yourself. You don't represent anybody because nobody is going to listen to you. And you're telling them to arrest people with, without these, the face coverings on them. You're telling them to arrest them. But the little girl's walking with her daddy across the street and boom, she gets wiped out. But hey, we don't care about that as long as she's wearing her pants that are 55 times too big and she's wearing, um, but I guess she's the woman in the relationship. I think I looked that up. She had a husband and it was like a, a woman. So I'm just going to ask you this stupid question. If you're a lesbian, which, hey, have at it if that's what you like. If you are that and you get married, why are you making your woman a husband? 
isn't it just two women being married? Like, why is she a husband? Because I don't tell my husband he's my wife. You get what I mean? Why don't I just say you're my wife? <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand. I know. Why is that her husband? It's not. She married a woman. Deal with it. You deal with it, lady. Identify correctly. That's not your husband. There's a wife and a husband. Stop trying to screw it. Stop trying to screw it up. You married your partner and she, her name is whatever the hell her name is. I know, wife band or hustify. Yeah, I can't. You know what? Again, again. Thank you for that. Um, again, you guys, first of all, <laughs> I'm going to get so in trouble. Do you know my friends hate me now? Not my good friends, but a lot of people don't like me. They don't like me. Let's see. She and her wife get police protection. Of course they do. Of course they do. The little eight-year-old girl that was shot walking across the street. No, that woman's not transgender. She's a woman. Don't put those words in my mouth. And I don't know if there's something wrong with anything I'm saying or not. I don't make that judgment and I don't give a shit. I'm objecting to the word husband being used for a female. She's not transgendered. She looks like a woman. She's caught. So if I go into a church and I marry my husband, who's a guy, and I say, this is my wife, okay? This is my wife, but he looks like a dude. Do you think that that's, I mean, if it's okay, then take all the rules off the book. I'm saying a true woman would be two women married. I mean, I, I don't know. Everybody, I, I'm, whatever. I know, I'm so confused. I'm talking about Lori Lightfoot. I think she, Lori Lightfoot feels like a man. She feels like she's just come out of the, the alien movie out of the stomach of Sigourney Weaver. And it's like, ugh, like that. That's what she feels like. That's what she feels. I don't know why I get married. I, I don't know what to say. I have no idea what to say. I'm saying stop with all of this political correctness telling me how I have to say something. I can see it freaking any way I want. Thank you. Oh my God. Thank you guys. Um, thank you for donating to baby Jack. And I don't even know what to say because our family is a disaster mess, right? <laughs> is after Keith, I can't even think straight. And I don't care what people think anymore because my son died. So you can talk about political correctness all you want. Do you know how dumb it sounds? Like when you lose your child, you're like, this is fucking stupid. I don't want to talk about it. Um, so it's just ridiculous. It's like, no, I can't get my Keithy back. I don't care who you're married to. Trust me. I don't freaking care who anyone's married to. I don't understand the crossing of words when they, like, in other words, if I call my son my son and then somebody makes up a term for babies in the hospital, like gender, gender neutral, no, my son is my son. Sorry. Um, let's see. I get it. Yeah. The proper is a wife. I, this is what I'm thinking. I know, but they're going to be like, it's not proper. Who are you? The grammar police. Yeah. I'm the fucking grammar police. Welcome. You've now met the grammar police. <laughs> oh my God. Trust me. I live in Los Angeles. I've had friends since I was a kid and they're all everything. Okay. Everything. They're all kinds of things. I, you know, I grew up with people in high school that were transgender. I worked in the sex industry. I've seen everything as far as like that. But this right now, crossing boundaries of like, why don't you just call me a goldfish? I'm a fucking goldfish. That's what I am. That's how I identify. I mean, good luck with that. If you're a dude, do you want me going into your bathroom, watching you do your guy stuff in the bathroom? Ugh, I can't go in the men's bathroom. I mean, unless I really have to pee. So I'll admit it. I'll make a hijack for the guys, but I'm a goldfish. No, I am a fucking pixie, but I'm saying I identify. So why, why are we having this where we're all identifying? Why don't you identify as a human being? Why don't you just say you're a human being? I don't need to know what you do in your bed. I don't care what you do unless it's with children. Then I'm fucking coming after you. But other than that, I mean, not, you know what I'm saying? Abusive children, not the family bed. But what I'm saying to you is they get so picky about that, that it's distraction. It's distraction. And it's distraction in a way that is disconcerting for kids. It's wrong. You don't feel good if you're not on their little bandwagon of whatever the hell kind of thing. Um, no, baby Jack needs surgery for his hip or he's not going to have 
it's broken in the hip and the femur there. So he needs his surgery. So they said last night at the extortion vet, the extortion vet for $2,400 for one night, that's extortion because they didn't even bandage baby Jack. They did give him fentanyl, but nobody can take it off his leg. So we really can't get the market value for selling that because it's on the dog's leg. But they didn't really um, do anything. And the surgery is supposed to be $10,000. Well, the poor, you know, come on, little Kenna, come on. She got Lila, Jason. They're not, none of them are working right now. I mean, they can't, they got to, you know, do their stuff, their kids at school, right? So they got to do this stuff with the kid. I know, right? Um, I can't. So Canna needs a little help with that. And then baby Jack, use a wheel. Yeah, I know they. Ha I know you can do that, but he's got to get the surgery within five days. Or it will adhere wrong or whatever. And I just, baby Jack is so fun. He loves the goats in the backyards. They do charge too much. I mean, um, yeah, baby Jack. Yeah, it's puppy needs surgery. <laughs> I forget what it is. Can, she should just put Baby Jack. Everybody would know who Baby Jack is, but um, she probably doesn't call him Baby Jack like I do as much. She's so cute. He was cute. Okay, it's Jack the Puppy Needs Surgery, organized by McKenna Horton. So you will go there, and that's where it is. And then it's got a little picture of um, Jack. So it's so cute. So cute. Yeah. He's cute, and I'm so... I mean, now, here I am. I mean, I never expected my son to die, and I never expected half the shit to happen that happened. So I can really, my heart really, really goes out to people who work at a minimum wage job and they can't take time off and they're single parents and a child dies. Do you know? Um, I have no idea what happened to baby Jack. I have no idea. But baby Jack... Um, Baby Jack, he just needs the surgery or he won't walk. I guess you could cut his leg off. But then my thinking with that is I'd have to put him to sleep because that's ridiculous. Yeah, no, I mean, look at the people that work nine to five and they're single parents and a child dies. Or even, did you guys hear about that? Did you, did you hear about um, Westlake Village, Los Angeles last week? There was, you're going to love this one. This one just was like, are you fucking kidding me? Are you kidding me? Okay, so a nice family, a woman, a husband, a man, a wife, and their baby in a stroller. So I don't know if the kid, well, maybe a buggy, like two or three. A seven-year-old on, on a scooter, a nine-year-old and 11-year-old. So four kids in this family. Four kids crossing the street, right? Uh, four kids and the parents. Somebody in a white Mercedes, of course, because we got to drive the Mercedes and it's got to be white because we're so cool. We got to have money was speed racing. This bitch was speed racing. Okay. This bitch was speed racing. She's 57. She's a socialite. Now, my objection to the word socialite is who the fuck names you that and who cares if your parents have money because bitch, you ain't done nothing for it. You were just born into it. Having said that, this bitch socialite who has more money than people decided out of her pathological need to drink and race probably some 30-year-old guy that she thought she you could have sex with, mm, hit the nine and the 11-year-old. She fucking drove into them. She didn't stop. She didn't stop. One fell on the road and died, and the other one 150 feet away. Who did this? Who did this? Like, why did she do this? And they put her in jail for $2 million, and she was out because she has money. You or I would not be out. I know Jackie is, so, I don't know how to thank Jackie. I don't know how to thank Jackie. Or anybody that helps. Um, I'm so grateful for it. But when, when you look at that woman and that family, I mean, they're in a nice neighborhood and they probably have money, but they got to pay for two funerals. They will never work the same. So their earning capacity is gone. They're, they're, because the parents, trust me, are not going to be able to function properly. The dad is going to handle it differently. The mom is going to handle it differently. And then you have babies 
little babies that have to be looked after, seven and three, two, whatever the little one was. So you think these people are going to be able to deal with it? I don't care if they're millionaires. They're going to not be able to deal with it. This woman was not being productive. Her name is Rebecca. And the last name without getting flagged over here would be Grossman Burn Center. So add those two together. And this bitch, because that's what she is, selfish, narcissistic, piece of crap human being decided that she had to street race. Because, you know, at I mean, in your 50s and as a woman and a troll looking woman, I'm sorry, a socialite. I think I'll go out and have like 15 drinks and then find some 22-year-old with his muscle car and race the fucker down the street through a residential neighborhood, through a crosswalk, and then not stop because why would I do that? Right. So there you go. Who's the woman put in on chat? I don't even know who that... Why? Is there somebody in? I didn't touch this. <laughs> I didn't touch it. Anyway, uh, she should not... No, she shouldn't have gotten out, but her family could pay the $2 million. So what we're saying is if you commit a crime alleged before you get arrested then and you have money, you get out. So that's okay. And she's not cooperating with police. The last message was she's not cooperating with police. So let me get this right. You kill two small children in a crosswalk. I... I when somebody sent me that and I started, I just started crying in the car. I could not, I couldn't contain, I just, I can't. So when you think that your life is really bad, I actually realized through that story that those people's lives is worse than my life with my Keithy. Those people lost two children. Those people couldn't save their children. They're dealing with some asshole with a lot of money problem and their life, so your life can always be worse. I just couldn't, I was just like, my heart broke. They were nice little boys. They were so cute. They're really cute little kids. Let's look them up. They're so cute. I forget their names, but they were so sweet. Young men, young men. I mean, at least Keith lived till he was 24. These two were nine and 11. I mean, really? I don't even know what to say to that. I mean, it's just terrible. It's the, I, yeah, I don't even know what to say. So here's this, this troll, because I'm calling, oh no, it's a, it's an ad. I'm calling her. Here's the two little boys. Look at these little precious faces. Look at them. Look at these two. These are the two that passed away. Look at these two little boys. What do you want to do that for? Why is it so important for you to race down the street drunk? Why is it so important for you to get, uh, I can't, I can't. Why is it so important for you to get in a car drunk? I mean, they're sweet little boys. They're darling. And here she is. Look at this. This is her. I'm a socialite because I come from money. I've never done anything on my own. I do drink and I run around racing young men. That's my claim to fame. And oh, I kill other people's children because really I'm a jealous, covetous bitch who can't deal with her own feelings. Yeah, I said that. Anyway, allegedly, this is her. Look at this. What are you doing? I know. I, I mean, uh, I, she should be shot. You should be shot if you kill. I, I don't. I'm a socialite. <laughs> I'm a socialite. No, no, I'm a socialite. What does that even mean? <laughs> Anybody who's drinking and driving after they've had DUIs, you're making a choice. Like you've got money. You can get in. A, I know those little boys are. I, I started crying when I couldn't even. I had to come home and nap. I couldn't even deal. I can't, I can't even deal with what their family's going to deal. And especially, especially with the car and the drinking, that would make me crazy. Like, um, absolutely horribly crazy to where I couldn't control myself. Um, that would just be, I, I don't know what to say, but what I will say to you, she's the, You've heard of the Grossman Burn Center. I think her family was responsible for that. But it's so, uh, let's see, all her money. Oh, it should be taken. Yeah. I, I, but see, here's what happens. This I never recognized. If one person in your family, because I'm sure 
She is a drunk. Who does that? She's 57. Really? Hi, I'm, hi, I'm 57. I'm at the bar again because everybody in my family hates me because I just thought I was going to get everything handed to me on a fucking platter. Oh, and I'm a whiny bitch in my 50s because I haven't done any work. None whatsoever. So let me go out and drink and street race. I can't even. Even Casey Anthony is, okay, completely wrong, but she was in her 20s. The, probably a coke head. Yeah, right? I know. Here's classic coke conversation. I can drive better on coke than you can straight. Okay. I've had that said to me. I can drive better drunk than you drive straight. I've also had that said to me. <laughs> right? Yeah, good job. No, I don't think so. Anyhow. Um, what? But see, here's the problem. And this is about energy. <laughs> Dirty C. I know. Here's the here's the problem with energy, okay? The problem, oh my God. I'm so sorry. I don't function. Oh God. This July, how did your son pass? Wait, come back. I'm so sorry. I totally get it. My Keithy was 24. I don't function. I'm in complete denial and numb. Um I want to see. Kids were on the hood. Yes, she hits the brakes and they roll off. Yes, this is what I'm saying. People should be picketing this woman. She should be picketed. Where's her face covering? Did anybody fucking ask that? Where's her face covering? Or was she driving with a face covering? Um, problem is energetically, here's what happens. Her family, okay, her family will take the blame for that and they're not going to be all bad people. So her family energetically is going to bear that shame and that guilt because how could you not? How could you not? How could you not do that, right? How could you not? Wait, okay, I'm trying to figure out. Pick at her house in the street, public. I Yeah, I'm thinking about it. Wait, the 16-year-old, wait, 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 do it for him. I want to know what happened to her 21-year-old. I don't know. Catalina, is that who we're talking about? Says he can turn off being drunk. Okay, yeah, we'll slap him in the face. <laughs> no, JFK Jr. isn't alive. What is wrong with everybody? Does that seem reasonable to you? It seems like a distraction to me. I can't go there. Okay, her son was killed. Okay, Catalina, what happened to your son? Come on, come up here. You got to talk about it. I had that said to me too. I took the keys. Oh yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah, well the parents um J I I believe JFK Jr is dead, but hey, I'm not in the popular consensus. Um yeah, no Catalina, what I can tell you this July it's the worst it's the worst feeling. I don't I don't get over it. But you've got to talk. Tell me how her son died. I can't see you guys. I want to know what how he passed. If it, Maybe it's not my business. I believe JFK is dead. I'm sorry. That's what I feel. Okay. Um, let me see. She said she doesn't know. Okay. So he was with his girlfriend. Okay. So something happened and maybe he couldn't breathe and he passed away. Okay. So she didn't know how he passed. Okay. Okay, so the first thing, let's see, she doesn't know. She said the girlfriend. Well, you got to find out from that girlfriend and get that girl to talk. They don't like to talk, though, you know. They're all, like, really closed-mouthed, mind, closed mouth. these kids, these young kids. They're very closed-minded. Close, not minded, closed-mouthed about their friends and what they're doing. It's probably, I mean, there's things that can happen. I know it's very, it's very hard. Yeah, what was his name? Tell us your son's name, Catalina, so we can say a prayer for him. Okay. Oh, my God. The death certificate. I got mine, and the shit I read on that, I was like, holy crap. Oh, no, you get a death certificate. You're talking about the coroner's report, and then there's an autopsy. I didn't get an autopsy because he died in a motorcycle accident. I didn't even think to ask. These are things you have to ask at the scene, but you're too messed up in the head. Um, but when I read the coroner's report and I found out what happened to Keithy's body, I was like, oh my God. Yeah. It, I mean, it's brutal. That's a very weird job those people have. Um, 
Yeah, 21 in July, I'm a single mom, da, 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 I don't function. You're not going to function. You don't have to function correctly. I don't function correctly right now. You don't have to function correctly. What you have to do, put your son's name down here so we can pray. Let's see, my dad died. Oh my God, yikes. Oh geez, I'm sorry about your dad. Oh my God. Yeah, when you choke and no one's there, then you choke. Sometimes people have trouble swallowing. Okay, his name is Jose. Oh, I can't even read that. I hope I'm saying that right. Jose, Jose Martinez. Is that Catalina's son? Okay, so that's who we're going to pray for. Also, Catalina, what you have to do, whether you want to do it or not, because you're not going to fucking want to do it, you have to start taking action to find out what happened to your son. You have to ask what happened to your son. You got to go to the girlfriend. You got to talk to the family. You got to talk to the police that found him because young men like that don't just drop dead on the ground. So this has, you got to go to the police station. You have to make yourself know and do this for your son. Take control of the situation. Do not let them tell you you're grieving and you have to stay at home. You have to go and ask questions and it's perfectly all right to find out what happened to your son it doesn't make it any more or any less the fact that he passed but you will be doing what a mother does and a mother will clean up her son's life by honoring it by making sure that you understand what happened to your child that's what you need to do okay i don't even know what that means um you need to find you need to find the strength to do it it's very difficult. I don't know. Some days I don't get out of bed. When the autopsy report came, I was in bed for, that was last Saturday. I was in bed on Sunday. So I wasn't able to really get out of bed. I mean, I got out for an hour and exercise, but then I wasn't able to get out of bed. So I spent my night in bed. Um, okay, if an autopsy was made, it will take a, a month or so or two months for you to get the results of that. And it will tell you if it's a drug toxicity or what they found. It will tell you the amount you can call the coroner and you can and they will talk to you about it you can do that there's a number on there with your son's case number because i asked about my son's body injury so that's the first thing i did is i once i got the report is on monday i phoned and asked specifically what does this mean what does this mean i know what it means i think but i wanted her just to you know do this and that's and so that's me taking control so that i understand so that i can process it that's the only thing I can tell you to do. And the other thing is, I want you to go look at all his pictures. I want you to remember him as your beautiful son. That's what I want you to do. I want you to look at his pictures. I want you to frame some of his pictures. I want you to go through those pictures and keep those pictures. So I want you to take an hour or two a day to go through his pictures, to go through his stuff. I want you to start thinking like a mom, like a mom, not like a victim, but a mom. A mom brings a child into this world and a mom takes a child out. So a mom is all the way through the child's life. And it's a great honor to be the one that steps behind your child. I'm talking about your, your son, Catalina. It's a great honor for you to have your son picked you as a mother so that, so that he could do what his soul needed to do regardless of that. And it's an honor for you to be able to tie his life up in the way that is the way that a mother would which is with love which is with information which is with power and which is with knowledge you brought your son in that way you will also close his life out that's just as important as giving birth believe it or not because we all die so when you get the honor of taking care of a child to do this for them or a friend or a parent because sometimes these kids are there and those kids aren't there it is an absolute blessing that you are your son's mother because he left while you he knew would take care of his life so that you have to think it doesn't mean you're not going to cry it doesn't mean you're not going to pull over in your car and start crying it doesn't mean you're not going to have a breakdown it doesn't mean you're not going to want to stab yourself in the chest doesn't mean you're not even going to want to kill yourself because you probably are going to have those thoughts. I have those thoughts all the time. Like maybe I'll go into the protest and cuss someone out. Maybe they'll, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. But then maybe, you know, they'll punch me out and I'll end up in the hospital and then I could get off the planet. But the point is we all die. So 
I have to remember that. Now, when it's my son, it's not so funny to say that. It's, it's really not. But we all die. So the honor is in carrying on for your son and bringing that beautiful child because your son is not dead. That's really a dumbass thing to say because you can't feel your son. You can't see him, but he's dimensionally somewhere else. So your son needs you and needs you energetically to understand that connection, whether you understand it right now or not. So you will do what a mother does. When a mother doesn't have food to feed her kids, she finds food. When a mother doesn't have money to pay for something, she finds money. When a mother doesn't know what she's going to do, you know, to live somewhere, she makes it work. Mothers are strong. Thank you for that. Thank you so much, you guys, for the super chat so much. Mothers are strong. Mothers take and do. Giving birth by nature means you are strong, Catalina. You, you gave birth to him. So his soul had a choice and the soul picked you. That's an honor. So that's an honor for you, whether you go along with it. I know all the guilt you feel. Those young men, so much guilt, so much screaming, clean your stuff up, pick your room up, tell me where you are, all of this, all of this, all day long. I, I oh my God, both Jimmy and Keith, I cussed out <laughs> before they passed away. Both of them, I said shit to. I was like, Jimmy, I'm like, go fuck yourself and hung up on him. And Keithy, I'm like, you're mean, Keithy. Clicked up the phone on him and it was the last thing, but he wasn't mean. He just wasn't doing something I wanted him to do. But mothers have the power. It's not in the father's hands. It's in the mother's. We give birth to them. It's our job. It's um, Look at it as... I can only describe it. I never thought I'd say this because I absolutely, literally never thought I would say this. But I didn't think I could handle Keith's ashes and I'm not joking with that. Like anytime anybody mentioned ashes to me or doing anything like this, I was like, God, get the creepy shit away, right? Get Just get that creepy stuff away from me. However, in order to recognize and honor my child, regardless of what happened on earth, what he did, the fact he didn't listen to whatever, whatever, okay? Um, yeah, my soul kind of fucked up on the mother category too. <laughs> um, but anyway, it, I never thought I could look at Keithy's ashes. I can look at his ashes fine. I, don't, I could even pour them into my container to let them go free because he's my son and I caretake him. So I went into mother mode. What does a mother do for a child that she can't put her arms around or can't see? What does she do with that? She sets her son free. She gives her son love. Why would I not still love my son? My son's just not going to be sitting here at the table with me. But you can set a place for your son. You can invite his spirit in. You can set a place for him. You can remember him. He was your son. What did he do? Talk about him. I want to hear about your son. Talk about your son. And if it makes other people uncomfortable, that's their fucking problem. Talk about your child. He's your child. You get to people talk nonsense all day. This woman's out speed racing, killing other people's children. I don't really care what she has to say. I want to talk about those people and what those people want. I want to know all about your son, Catalina. Start talking. Make a memory book for him. Tell people. It doesn't matter. Tell your manicures. Tell your hairdresser. Tell the neighbor. Don't stop living because he passed. You will be grief stricken. I cry every night or in the morning, or sometimes in the middle of the afternoon. Sometimes I have to pull my car over. I'm just driving to get a coffee, and I got to pull over because I can't stop crying, and sometimes it's overwhelming, and then I show up to the drive through line, and I look like I've got, you know, I, some kind of toxic went off in the car. Doesn't matter. That's what you have to do. It's okay. It's okay. It's, it's what happens. That's what you have to do. But you, your son, does not want you to stop Your son does not want you to stop your life because he passed. He wants you to, he needs you to be his mother right now. So his mother will stand up and be proud of him. Just like those women, and I'm not comparing either one of our sons to this, but you've seen women on TV that go into jail and speak about their sons and stand up because that is a mother's job. It's not a mother's job to ignore what a child did or not see them clearly 
but it's a mother's job to love their child regardless. It's called unconditional love. So your son left this dimension early. He's still your son, Catalina. So you need to talk. You need to talk about him. You need to talk for him. You need to talk through him. That's what you need to do. Um, that's what you need to do. And you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. I'm telling you, because I'm not, I'm, I'm not that person, really, to do this. But somehow I learned how to do it through key. So your son wants you to grieve however you have to grieve, but he wants you to mother him. So mother him. Mother him now. Take care of what he needs to have taken care of. Find out from the doctor exactly what the hell happened to him. What, what his heart registered, what his, the creatin, the BUN, do all of that. What was in his blood? What does it mean? Write it down. Make sure you understand it. Process it in your head. This is what this means. This is what this means. Your knowledge is power. And then you can mourn your son properly because you will know what happened to him. That's what I can say. These poor people with the murder victims out there and they never find their kids again or they find part of their kid, not their kid. What is that? They'll ne they, they, don't, they can't process it. You are lucky. You have your son there. You know where he is. Find out what happened to him and don't be scared. Don't be, a sh none of that. Find out as a mother. We mothers, we, we spy on our kids all the time. We know what the hell they're up to, right? <laughs> we know, we know. Remember when your son was 10 and 11 and he was doing stuff? You knew what he was doing. I know what mine was doing. That's exactly right. You know what your child is doing. You know. So don't worry about that. All of us make mistakes. We are all fucked up doing stupid shit. All of us. All the time. So just really honor your son. He picked you as a mother. And I know he did so for a reason. It's, yes, it's traumatic as hell. It's tra so traumatic. I went completely numb after Keith passed. So I went numb. I went numb. I'm talk to therapists. I went to a healer. I go to psychics. I do everything around every week, everything and anything I can do, anything I can do to put my mind straight. And you think I would know how to do that doing what I do, but I don't. <laughs> so I have to ask for outside help. And if I feel like going to get a mushroom sandwich in the middle of the night with some ice cream, I go do that. That's what I do. And if I can't get up in the morning because I'm too stressed and I don't want to put on clothes, I wear my pajamas out. Lila wears her pajamas out too, but for no other reason than we were getting ice cream. <laughs> mm. So we do that. That's what you do. You have to lift yourself up to do that. It's not easy because we are taught that, see, there's a misconception on this planet. We are taught that we're always going to have our children with us. And I don't know that I believe that all the moms I talk to. So yeah, it's, I can't, I, please, I might as well be, I can't read my way out of a paper bag as far as it comes to Keith, but I do know, I do know that some people um, process grief differently, but I think it's extremely important for you to talk about your son with people. The, yeah, it's, I was, I was totally numb. I went numb. I went numb like Novocaine numb. <laughs> I was just like, here, touch me. I can't feel anything. So it's, it's weird. It's, and don't worry what people think until they've been through it. They don't know what they're, they don't know what they're talking about. So that's exactly, oh, ice cream and sal <laughs> salted caramel. I may go out for that after. No, it's a total shock to the system. It's a total shock to the system. Of course, it's very shocking. I did, I'm doing acupuncture. I'm also doing acupuncture, cupping, um, I do my chiropractor. I do everything all week. And do you think do you, my, my manicurist, I went to her. I didn't tell her. It was a couple of days after Keith passed. And I went to, I have two people I go to, but I went to the one that was local. And then one of them is a friend of mine from 20 years. And I will drive out to see her. And she knew about Keith passing because I told her she knew Keith his whole life. So of course I'm going to tell her, but by the new shop that's close to me, they didn't. And so I went in just a few days after he died to get my nails done for all of that. All of the things that one does after and somebody, you know, have to do your nails in the parking lot with a mask on when it's a hundred degrees outside, just saying that's California for you. Uh, so when I went and did that, there was a girl in the parking lot that knew my son from high school and she came over sobbing and I, she gave me a hug and I just remember looking at her going, 
why is she crying? So I just looked at her and this is what I said to her. I said, I'm really sorry that, that Keith passed. And I said, I know that he was your friend. I didn't know this girl so well, but anyway, I said, I know that he was your friend and I'm sorry, I can't cry right now. I don't have any feelings. I'm numb because I just said like, I'm going to let it out. That's the truth. So I did not tell my manicurist what happened. Of course, they're looking because she's sobbing and I'm hugging her and I'm not crying. So they probably figured it was something with her. Anyway, I just told her this last week what happened to Keith because I was ready to say it. So take your time. You, there's no rules. There's no nothing. There's no nothing. Don't let people tell you how to fucking grieve. Don't let the police tell you like they did tell me, the one, the one cop. You need to go home and grieve. You need to shut the fuck up is what you need to do. Don't tell me shit. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. Um, you, you just, you have to take it the way that you do it. And never let anybody who isn't you tell you how to grieve. Whatever the fuck you want to do to grieve, do it. It doesn't matter. I mean, within the law. I'm not saying like go out and cause chaos, but it doesn't matter. It's true. It's true. It doesn't matter. And you know what I say to people? I had a conversation the other night with um, a family member who was talking about another family member. I cannot say who these people are. Anyway, one of the family members was discussing their rage at the secondary family member who is so selfish and such a loser that they had to bring up the most benign conversation to this family member and we're just dealing with Keith's death. But they had to bring up something so mundane and so self-focused on them. And I, all I said is, I don't really give a shit. My son died. I don't care what you have to say. Sorry. I don't care. I'm not going to help you with that. And I don't care with that. So right now, I'm just telling the truth with what I feel. And if people don't like that, then they don't like it. Let them go deal with their family. I'm going to deal with my child and I'm going to, so petty, such petty, petty. Oh, it's very individual. I felt a real need to, to, <laughs> to protect my son's ashes, to make the jewelry for, you know, little Pagey and his friends. I feel like I have to do that because it's my son. I feel like I had to honor him and tribute him. And I'm going to say this again. Catalina, she's probably gone off. She's like, shut up, Sloan. Shut the flipping hell up. But ask your friends for help. If you can't handle it yourself, ask them. Every single person on this YouTube channel has helped me, has helped to contribute to Keith's memory, has, regardless, the, the beautiful, I'm saying this truthfully, the beautiful letters, the cards, the donations for his bench, which cost 4000 in Los Angeles, believe that or not. And you should see the park is now overrun with the homeless. Not that I'm judging. I'm just saying. So when Keithy's bench gets in there, I'll be cleaning up the garbage there for free because I want Keithy's bench nice. It just went downhill in the past two months. Anyway, without you guys, I would not have that. So it's a, I'm not even, whether, whether somebody comes and babysits your 16 year old son, beautiful. That's a gift to you. Whether the neighbor helps you go buy groceries because you can't think. I couldn't think. Arlene, I'm telling you, Arlene and Carol had to tell me where the bike, the motorcycle was and they kept the cards. I had no idea. Like I thought I did. And then I got home and I'm like, I don't understand. I don't, under, I don't get it. So you have to, no, we haven't put the cross back. I'm waiting for Marvin to get, um, Oh, for Baby Jack? Oh, my God. So great. Let's see. Baby Jack. I don't even know. I have to look. I'm waiting for Marvin to get free from work, and then we're going to do like a stealth bomb in the middle of the night, me, Jason, and Marvin, and whoever else wants to come. We're going to dig that hole, put that cross back, bitches. That's what we're doing <laughs> um, because that's what we do. I, I don't even care. I'm like, you know what? I don't even care. I'm sorry, I wish I did, but I don't. I want it up there for my son. And even Melody texted me. Melody's like, did you take the cross down? And then she's like, can we do something? And she's so sweet. Melody um, Melody that was with Keith when he passed was so cute. Um, so what I feel, no, it's 20. It says little baby Jack's fund. I'm just checking. Let me check. 
This is Jack the Puppy Needs Surgery. Here's where we are with Jack the Puppy right here. So that's great. That's enough money for her at least to put down on the surgery or doing it. What is Jackie? Um, oh, Jackie sent me this. I'll read it. I'm going to read this. This is from Jackie. Okay, you guys. It's cute. Look. Look, it's an elephant's eye. Elephants are decent, kind animals, really. Why do people got to kill them? Why do people have to kill elephants? Stop that for the tusks, you weird people. Um, no, it's 2,700, Keely. It's 27. I think you're not seeing the, the two on it. It's 2,700, which is great. Um, okay, when a mother elephant loses her baby, the other elephants stand in a circle around her and uh, and allow her all the time she needs to grieve and mourn. They don't hurry her along or push her to abandon the body. They, okay, oh, they get her, they, oh, they touch her with their trunks, a silent show of unwavering support. Okay, so like elephants are smarter than we are. That's what the elephant do. No, it's 2,700, you guys. I'm going to put it up again. Thank you, Jackie, for that. That's true. Um, no, I'll show you the amount. I think this is it. I'm looking at this right here. Oh, I was looking at it right here. I feel like I'm a fundraiser now, of which I never wanted to raise funds for any there. There, look, it's right there. Can you guys see that? It's 27. So thank you guys. Anybody that donated to Baby Jack, thank you. Um, I'm going to keep you updated. Monday, Baby Jack goes to the... Oh, one person donated 700. Oh my God. That's fucking great. Thank you, whoever did that. I don't know who did that. No, I think one person donated 700. And then, because I know Deborah donated... Um, our family donated some, and then I don't know. One person donated 700 so whoever did that, God bless them, because this little dog needs to be fixed. It was probably Jackie, cheeky Jackie. Let's look. You guys are all spying on the donation. Um, oh, Jack's grandpa donated too. Yeah, Deborah donated. Um, everybody, the beautiful people donated. So nice. Um, so nice. Everybody's done so good for baby Jack. So, I mean, no, they didn't take his leg off. They got to do the surgery. Uh, oh, Jackie. Thank you, Jackie. I know Jackie's just unbelievable. Yeah. Oh yeah. The money's going to Kenna for baby Jack. We go on Monday. I think we found there's some kind of a surgery center that they do discounts that Kenna found. That's not a good thing to say with surgery, but it is for the puppies. Kinder for rescue. So they do, it's like a non-profit. So they do all kinds of different kinds of bone surgeries for the babies. Think about that for a second. I'm thinking back to when Jason broke his, le uh, broke his baby jack. Yeah, he does. Um, I can't believe that little dog got hit by a car. I was just like, what the fuck? I slept all night. I just tried not to think about it. I was like, I can't, if they had to put him to sleep, I was going to freak out. Um... What I was going to say, when Jason broke his leg when he was little, maybe two and a half on the slide, um, yeah, credit cards are accepted, but who has a credit card with like $10,000 on it? Not me, um, not Kenna, not Jason. Uh, we all had them, but you know, when this lockdown happened, they started cutting, cutting back on the credit cards. But when Jason hurt his leg when he was like two and a half and it was in a cast, I don't think it cost that much to fix him. And then when he was 12, he went surfboarding and busted his foot. And I don't think it was that much then. And then when he was 17 and did it yet again on a motorcycle of all things, we took him, where did we take him? I think we took him to the county hospital because that's all I could do at the time. So there you go. Um, so the vets are crazy. They're crazy. I have 11 screws. Oh my God. In my ankle. Oh my God. I can't even, I just hope that never. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's so, so kind. 
I don't even know what to say. So kind. You guys are so, like, good. Yes, Newsom needs to be recall recalled. Well, where are you, Keely? That you have a wonderful vet. <laughs> are they in Los Angeles? Um, yeah, I know. Tulip's fine. I went and brushed Tulip today. I brushed her. She pulled the old, oh, Washington shit. Darn it. Um, Tulip pulled the old bait and switch. So she came out, because I got to brush her. She's a Furby. So I brushed her, and then I take a little matte thing, and she hates that, and she gets a bit snippy. Then she saw the neighbor's car pull up, and so she acted all excited, and then she made a beeline in the house. And I was like, really? She tricked me. So Tulip tricked me, and that's what happened. Yeah, I don't think uh, Tulip is beautiful. She hasn't, she's probably missing Keith. And she, she heard the car though. And it was weird because it came in and it's like she was looking for Keithy. Um, so she, I know Tulip misses her Keith so much. Because Keith was a good, good little, little, good little kid to her. I love my psycho Gemini dog. <laughs> Tulip is an Aries and Baby Jack is an Aquarius. So Tulip is very Aries-like, but she's nice. She's so nice. I like Tulip. But she did trick me today. Yeah, she's 14, Tulip. We rescued her 14 years ago. She's been there. We're not cat people, but now we're cat people. <laughs> mm. Is it Canadian Thanksgiving? I'm so not Canadian anymore. I'm American. I'm trying to avoid all holidays. That's my grieving mother tribute. I'm choosing not to do holidays. <laughs> There will be no holidays. Do not talk about the holidays. No, I've actually been out Christmas shopping because I hate Christmas at this point. So I'm like, I'm just going to do it at a different time. Yeah, Tulip is so cute. Oh, honey. And she's a Taurus on an Aries cusp. Probably a Taurus with a name like Honey because she likes food, right? Right. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to do my videos. I am. I have to get good at speaking. Yeah, baby Jack Aquarius and shins or ankles. Exactly. I have to um I have to focus on my videos. Oh, your poodle is Virgo. I love my poodles. Tulip came after my poodle Tucker passed away. So it was very interesting, weird kind of a thing. It was very weird. Oops. Somebody is doing this. I keep getting these notifications from crazy people like this is happening down the street. This is happening. Um, they're going to tell us, here's why American Armenians are testifying in Southern California. Do you guys remember? They're telling us why this is happening. Here's the parade again. Or I mean the, not the parade, protest. Okay, so it's escalating. Okay, it's escalating. Let's see. Um... Oh, I guess because in their... Oh, they blocked the 101 and the 170. Stop blocking freeways. Let's see. Oh, yes. Somebody asked about the Kardashians. Yes, the Kardashians have shared the fundraisers for the Armenian genocide, which took place in 1915. The Turkish government disputes that the deaths estimate range from... 600,000 to 1.5 million under the Ottoman Empire constituted a genocide. I think if you kill five people from the same thing, you're doing genocide, okay? So I don't even argue about stupid people that write stupid things like this. So they're talking about all kinds of stuff that are going on. You know what? There's been many genocides. Go protest, everybody. Everybody, um, how I don't know how the protest helps unless, but they're, they're, I'm not sure I'm reading this correct, but it feels like there's some sort of resurgence of this going on, um, some sort of resurgence going on now, but back there. Wait, Armenians, you're in America. They certainly are. I'm going to go out with my Canadian flag. I'll probably get run over. Um, no, everybody likes Can Canadians. The, the Kardashians are, they're, they are Armenian. I don't know about the mom, but the dad, well, they're half Armenian. The mom, the dad was Armenian. Um, remember that Saturday night live? Oh, I, I know we all know the influence that the Armenian structure has had on at least Southern California, but you know, what's fascinating. I never thought of this. Okay. So in the eighties, in the eighties, 
Remember Saturday Night Live? Remember, um, was it Will Ferrell and two of the other guys? And I don't know who it was. It might have been. I can see his name in my head. Oh, I'm not good with names tonight. Anyway, um, <clears throat> they would go into the bar, remember, and they were dressed like cheese balls with um, all the jewelry around there. And they were like, they were like this, the hip guys, remember, in the bars. Do you remember that from Saturday Night Live? Do you, do you guys remember that? Um, yeah, if you do remember that, Saturday Night Live. Yes, okay, Mary remembers it. I'm like, somebody, come on. <laughs> Saturday Night Live back then was written, ah, Chris Kattan, thank you. Fucking hilarious, okay? So we all thought that that was really funny. That was a parody on Armenians back then. In Glendale, it was written. So meaning some of the writers were, yes, wild and crazy guys. But that was a parody on that back then. It just, I mean, I was like, they're so ahead of their time, which is, interesting isn't it because look what's happening now and then we have the, the yeah Catan. i was i could see his name i'm like you know will farrow no will farrow does the stupid cheerleader guy you know like where he does with the pom-poms i'm sorry so ridiculous two wild and crazy guys yeah that's it no not but it wasn't steve martin's one it was chris Catan, and it was yeah it was all of that um yeah everybody hates will farrow now but that's not what i'm talking about i'm just saying from from Saturday Night Live. Well, that's a parody on the Armenian culture. Didn't realize it at the time because there was not such an influx. But in the past, that was the 80s. So in the past 35 years, really, Glendale, Burbank, um, oh God, all surrounding cities, even like Sunland, Tahunga, all of that, all of those cities have a large Armenian population. So this makes this to me makes sense, right? Like that they would be protesting here. And no, I don't know what any protest does unless you're going to go outside and protest that woman's house that ran over those two little precious boys and protest her so that she has to see what she did in black and white. I don't know what it, what it happens, except my understanding is that there is something going on in their native country that they are protesting here. So I wish they would protest freeing the Americans um, yes, she is. Um, Jason's Kenna, Lila's Kenna, Lila's mommy. Uh, I wish they would protest the fact that we're losing our freedoms every five seconds. I wish people would gather together like this and do what they need to do for us as people so that we can actually free ourselves, right? We need to free ourselves, but we don't free ourselves. So, yeah, so that's what I'm going to say. But anyway, want to explain this to you guys. Okay. Yeah, they walked by my place in New York. I don't know who did, but whoever did. I have never... Oh, watch Saturday Night Live. Go back to the 80s. It's hilarious. Although it's not, but it is. Anyway, okay. So what are we... Spiritual war protesting? Yeah, well, we could do that too. King Tut. I haven't seen King Tut since I was a child. There's many, 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 many genocides all over the world. So many genocides that it's, I mean, of all kinds of people, there isn't a group of people that I don't think has been, hasn't been the Asian people, the Irish, you know, I mean, the Italians, the Germans, the, the Romanians, the gypsies, the, you know, maybe not the people from Canada because we're the bloody socialist pacifist ass kissers of the entire, you know, besides Sweden, Canada comes in a close second behind how can we kiss your ass and let, and let you walk all over us. We kind of come in that way, but you will notice the Canadians that escaped those Canadians got some balls. Um, all right. Switzerland. Yeah. Well, I mean, just a pacifist neutral country, like totally neutral picks, neither picks here nor there. Socialists too, where everybody, oh, was there genocide? Oh, probably the native people. You're right. The Mohawks against children. Wait, what genocide? Tell me. At least Canadians have, no, stop saying that, Dave. Stop. Stop with that universal health care. I must stop this rumor. This must stop. This must stop. Okay. So this is my pet peeve. 
I have many friends that are going, um, oh yeah, Canada, yes, Canada is great. I'm just not living there under the taxes. Canada has a lot of stuff, but the way it's run, it will never be used because it's not in alliance with what they're hoping to do trade-wise and this-wise and that-wise. Okay, so when they talk about universal health care, I'm going to say this again. Nothing is free. Canada, it is not free. You can't, yeah, exactly. Canada is not free. In Canada, you pay OHIP. I'm from Ontario, so I don't know what it is in Vancouver, what it is in Quebec. I don't, I don't know. I pay OHIP, okay? So Ontario Health Insurance, whatever it stands for. So where do you think the money to balance the doctors working for free comes from? I want you guys all to think logically. Oh, we have universal health care and we have six times the amount of taxes that other countries pay. So what are taxes? Taxes, oh, thank you for saying it's a fallacy because it is. The universal health care is coming from your freaking taxes. It's math. It isn't free. Free means, hi, please come in. We will do free medicine. We don't care if you pay taxes and we charge like this. Also, right out of the mouth of one of my friends from two years ago that had some kind of back problem and had to go to a doctor to get the bank, the bank, the back looked at, okay? There was close to like a two-year wait. This also went for a friend that had a foot surgery thing she needed and had to have that looked at. The doctor said, if you want to come in sooner, you can pay us $600 and you can come in next month, right? That's not universal health care. That's bribery of people who are in pain. And if you're in pain, you'll pay a doctor, right? Okay. Then the surgery. Oh, nothing is free. What is wrong with these? We have universal health care. Yeah, go ahead and buy milk in Canada. See how much it costs you. Pay for a gallon of gas. See how much it costs you. Pay for a pack of cigarettes, although you shouldn't be smoking. Just saying, go do that in Canada. And you have no control because my friend, okay, my friend said, my friend said to me, I need to get my disc fused. I guess it was a disc fused. And the other one needed to get a pin in her foot. Two year wait. So what is she supposed to do for two years with a broken foot? I'm just fucking curious. And the pin, I mean, the, the fusion, they said, not only do you have to wait like a year and a half, we'll give you the surgery and we're going to use stuff, but it's going to fuse this much of your back and it's not very flexible, blah, 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 blah. If you give us $12,000, this is what they're telling my friend, we'll fuse your back and we'll use this textured stuff so that you can actually, he was athletic, so you can actually continue to move. How is that universal health care that everybody's blah blahing about that's not true true? Okay? You pay your OHIP or whatever it is in your province, which is like a state, but from that point on, you're paying a shit ton of taxes. Get real. No, Canada's not free. Have you, can, uh, but American... No, they're all, it's not a side. I'm Canadian, okay? I'm fucking Canadian. I'm, I'm going to tell it like it is. I live there. I live there. I live there. I know what the health care is like there. I was there. I'm not making this up as an American. I am a Canadian. So you're not going to bullshit me with America's flawed, Canada's flawed. They're all fucking flawed. Nobody's working for free. Nobody's working for free in a hospital. I don't care what country you're in. Nobody is working for free. Now, the difference between Canada and America, if you want the truth, is the American, I mean, the Canadian doctors are on a socialized system where the cap for the amount of money they can make is only so much. So if you're working in a hospital, you can only work, okay, say it's 200,000. I don't know what they pay doctors. Say it's 500,000. You can only achieve that much money. People, no, I'm born in Canada. I'm Canadian. I'm still Canadian, okay? I know what Canada is. People like, oh, you don't know Canada. Yes, the fuck I do. That's why I got out, okay? Now I'm trying to get out of America, but that's a whole other story. But I am Canadian, born and bred, complete Canadian. So I know you're not fooling me. I got family there. I understand. I love the country of Canada, the texture of the country, 
everything, the wildness, all of that. But here's the difference. You come to America and we're completely for profit in this country. So you can make money in this country. And you can make a shit ton of money in this country. In Canada, I was born and raised there. I'm screaming at people. I'm like, fuck you for saying I can't talk about Canada. I can always talk about Canada. All systems are flawed. All systems are flawed. It's not about Canada or America. Canadians ostensibly don't like Americans because the freaking people are fleeing out of Canada. They don't. Canada's like the stepchild in Cinderella. I mean, let's just, America's the big, you know, glamorous, though burning in hell, country, right? Australia, yes. I, uh, well, Australia is under the British Commonwealth. I mean, so is Canada. Still, the queen got her little nails, even though we kicked them out, but it's still part of the British system of thinking. So, oh, I got nowhere to go on this planet. I, I got to get off the planet. <laughs> mm. But America's my home, and America's given me the freedom to be able to do things the way I want to do them. And so I've always loved America because it's it's more you're more flying by the seat of your pants. Uh, although I will say right now, um, California is communist. So yeah, I'm in communist California right now. I don't know what to say. Uh, so I don't know where I'd move to because the world leaders have all captured the freedom and the fun and the, you know, whatever. What about the Chinese troops in Canada? Okay, I don't know about them. Yeah, the queen, I know the queen's on the money. I got kicked out of grade school for not singing God Save the Queen. Repeatedly, not standing, not putting my heart over here. Not, I, I hated the woman since I was a child. Call it instinct. Um, yeah, California, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> totally, it's totally, it's actually like in California, it's frightening, uh, but I love the country of Canada and it's always home, home to me. Canada is my home. So I'm not there because it's, I mean, let me give you an example. I was there two years ago when my aunt was sick and then she passed away, probably today she passed away two years ago. So I was there at the end of September to see her before... <clears throat> God, my throat, to see her before she passed away, right? Mm. Excuse me, I apologize. So I went to see her, and I this is a true story. So I was in North Vancouver. My aunt's in Vancouver. I, no, she's in North Van, actually. Sorry, I love North Vancouver. It is an exquisitely beautiful, overpriced, but well worth it. It's It's, oh my God, it's so beautiful. And there's places to run and trees and greenery. I miss everything and it's not as cold as Ontario. It's so beautiful. It is absolutely gloriously beautiful. I love it and I and North Vancouver is one of my all-time favorite cities in the entire world, although I haven't been all over the world. Anyhow, I was filling up on gas. I come home from hiking and I mean, come back from hiking. I was driving by and I was getting gas. So I was on the phone and the gas station attendant came out and said, you can't do that. And I looked at him and I'm like, what? And he goes, I go fill my tank up with gas. Like I was confused. He goes, talk on the phone while you're filling your tank up with gas. And I was like, what are you, a Nazi? <laughs> Who are you? What is this? He literally said that to me. And I'm like, I can't live in a place where they think that there's like things to do that. <laughs> no, 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 no. I just looked at him. I said, yeah, okay, buddy, I'm finishing my tank. And he kept saying I couldn't be there. I'm like, you need to leave me alone. And it was hilarious. I was like, I can't do what? Really? What are you, the boss of me? <laughs> no, he didn't. Expound. I was like, are you like a what? what? I was like, huh? <laughs> Yeah, I, okay, yeah, a spark can make it explode. Said every person at every gas station everywhere across North America 9,000 times a day on their cell Do you think I fill my car up now while I'm not on my cell phone? I'm just asking you because I'm on my cell phone 24-7 and I'm filling up my gas on the phone. We all are. The point is nobody's blowing up from the gas station cell phone lie that they told you, okay? That's a lie, a lie. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I know. I was wishing for that, the radical group to come in. <laughs> you could blow up the phone. Yeah, I'm just asking you. Have you gone to your local? Who says this? No one's blown up phones anywhere. What a crock of shit. 
Yes, technically it could happen. An airplane could land on your head too. When is it happening? <laughs> mm. I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say. When I get into Canada and I get into, like when I cross the border, <laughs> I fly into Seattle or Spokane or wherever, but this time it was Seattle, I was going to Vancouver or New York, it depends where I'm going. And I cross, so I fly American and then I drive across, so I have a car. So I'm driving across and she's like, what's your business in Canada? I'm like, what's your business asking me? What's my business? There's my Canadian passport. You know my business. You know my business. You can't kick me out of my country. Move along, little doggy. I'm coming home. That's what I said. I'm on my way home. And, oh my God, it's so funny. But when you cross back over <laughs> and you're leaving Canada, the Americans are like, yeah, go by. <laughs> they don't even care. Going into Canada, it is bizarre. They've got this bug up their ass. Like, I've been asked, like, why did you move to California? We used to go up every Christmas. Every Christmas, we got stopped going in. We would go through Spokane to get to trail. Every Christmas, we got stopped. Here's what we got. Do you have any contraband in the car? This is me. Yeah, there's a bunch of shit under the seats, but I'm not going to say that. So I'm going to say no. <laughs> what did they find? They found potatoes because I would buy groceries and fill a car up in Spokane at Costco so that we could eat for like the two weeks, right? You know, like the hams, the roasts, whatever. They'd find the potatoes. They'd take the potatoes. The potatoes were a problem for the Canadian border people. Because, <laughs> yeah, every time. And then one time we got stopped five times because I got to my cousin's, left my phone in Walmart somewhere where I was shopping over there, had to drive back and then drive back and then drive back because I left Walmart. They couldn't find it. Then they found it and drive back and drive back. We got stopped going back across the border, back and forth, back and forth. Literally police escort. What are you doing? Why are you doing this? Me, I'm tempted to say why I'm running drugs. Why do you ask? <laughs> but I have to not get my sarcastic mouth going. Yeah, my whole fam. Well, a lot of our families in trail. Um, yeah, exactly. There's Bellas living in trail. There's Bella tires. There's all kinds of Bellas. There's tons of Bellas living in trail. There's Bellas in, in Penticton. There's Bellas in um, Kelowna. There's Bellas all over. I No, I, I wasn't running drugs. I'm saying my sarcastic ass self wants to come out and say, <laughs> um, yeah, um, they, <laughs> my sarcastic side wants to come out and go, why it would be drugs I'm export, exporting in and out, you weirdos. Like, I mean... I can't even, anyway, yeah. Oh, tons of family. Yeah, we went for Keithy. Oh my God, Keithy was up there for a year. <laughs> Keithy's learned to ski up there and Jason. Yeah, there's all the Bellas are in trail. The Bellas are in Penticton and the Bellas are in Kelowna. The Bellas are in Peachland. The Bellas are also in Australia. The Bellas are in Toronto. The Bellas are all over Canada. abso freaking Lily. But yeah, we spent many a Christmas in trail um, if you get signs done there, I'm trying to think of Jay's sign company. I think it's signs plus, and I think they moved just a little bit past trail going up a little bit up, whatever. But yeah, I used to spend all my time there in the winter. So there you go. <laughs> um, we skiing, we climbing, you know, all the kids at Christmas, all the kids out there right now. Yeah, the, well, I'm not saying there couldn't be cocaine potatoes. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking, yeah, let's dig out those. No, he just wanted potatoes for Christmas Eve. Um, you got to marry into the family. Uh, my name is Irish, and it came from my birth mother. Bella is, I married a person with the last name Bella, and it's Austrian. John's family is Austrian, so that would probably make him from the same hometown as you-know-who caused all that trouble. As Arnold, as Arnold, <laughs> say Arnold Schwarzenegger. Austria, yeah, Bella, yeah, Bella Lugosi. But Bella is Austrian, at least in our family name, and Sloan is Irish. So there you go. I almost got locked up the, for making, <laughs> yeah, I know, I can't help it when I go through an airport. I'm like, I'm not playing serious with you because you people on that day, on September, do you remember the year, 2001? On that day, you people at the airport 
said that a bunch of stuff happened with people with box cutters. Now, that's some nonsense and bullshit there. So take your little selves back and stop talking. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I get in trouble everywhere I'm going. Um, I get in trouble. Oh my God, Lauren wasn't even born in 2000. I love potatoes. I had sweet potato fries tonight. Uh, for you in Burbank, people, and all over the vinyl box cutters, that's what they said. What? Stab me. I'm going to take on the box cutter. You know, I, obviously, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, no, no, I didn't. I met him here. He was an escapee too. No, I met him here. Um, yeah, I met everybody here. My Our whole street was Canadian. We all be Canadian. Um, <laughs> sauerkraut and, and dill chips. Yes, love it. Um, <clears throat> oh, you were born in 2004. You're a baby, a little baby. I say that because you are. I don't mean disrespect with it, but you are a youngster. Our country. Oh, Canada. He is six and adorable. Yeah, it's... Canada is the most beautiful country. The wildlife in Canada, like just growing up there and, you know, being in the beautiful Canadian like lake, you know, up in the lakes, up in the, up at the cottage, up everywhere, the summer camps, so beautiful. I was really lucky. Uh, it's it, very beautiful and I miss the texture of the country. What, a, uh, of course, Toronto's under lockdown. <laughs> Phase two, Toronto home of insane people. I can't. I just don't know what to say. I know. Canada is beautiful. Yeah, it is clean, but there's, understand, um, <laughs> somebody likes, you know, what kind of potatoes. That kind of potatoes. <laughs> uh, Alaska is beautiful. Everything is so beautiful. The whole place is really beautiful. Yellowknife is, it's, it's beautiful. I loved Ontario. Very bloody cold though, and very cold. Although I will say I never had um, to worry about my weight in Canada. Like I was, it wasn't a problem because you're out in the cold. So I was probably freezing all the time. Midland, Ontario. My parents used to live in Midland for a while. Um, it's clean. It's very clean there. But keep in mind, Southern California has as many people as the whole country of Canada from east to west, and Canada is a bigger country, land square-wise, okay, like acreage-wise, than Southern California and the United States. But SoCal has as many people in it as the entire country of Canada. So there. $5 for milk, 15 for a small pack of smokes. Yeah, I love Toronto. I was up and down those streets like a crazy bitch. Um, <laughs> so SoCal is over 7 million people live on Long Island. See, Canada is like 25 million or whatever or something. And it's only three areas that are um, populated, like three major places. The rest, it's more spread out. So we don't have many people in Canada, which is why Prime Minister Mental Patient, you know, brings a bunch of random hoo-hahs in there to... Um, Whoop it up in Canada. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm not saying it on here because I'll be called some name that I'm not. 34 million in Canada. 34 million. Okay, yeah. Um, we need like empty spots. I'm not opposed to Canada. I'm not opposed to... Yes, we, uh, we used to go to Florida every winter in our house because of the snow in Canada. So Canadians are in Florida because of that. Irish here too. Birthday 1022. Great. Yeah, our whole family's Irish. Drunken Irish is what we are. I don't drink, but if I were drunk, it would fix with the rest <laughs> mental. Yeah, well, he is a mental patient. You know who I mean. Mm. There was always, they always talk about it. There's no guns in Canada. There's no this. I'm like, what are you people talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what anybody's talking about anymore. They, they have this thing like, this is good. This is bad. Our world. Oh, Banff is exquisite. Sorry. Banff is exquisite, right? exquisite oh my god beautiful i remember the moose the moose were on the side of the street and just lake louise oh beautiful so yeah so gorgeous now i gotta look up um let's look up people in southern california oh my god i'm getting tired sorry people i ate outside tonight no i ate in a restaurant it was very fun. I didn't wear my mask in and I didn't wear my mask out. I feel sorry for every single restaurant owner. Now we have to snap a picture of a code to scan to get the menu. 
So what I've determined is happening is everybody is making me do their job for them. <laughs> okay, people in Southern California, population. Population, all right. I've just been rambling again. I gotta do a sensible show, I'm trying to. 23.86 million in Los Angeles, y'all. Do you see how many people are here? Do you see why it's so dirty here? Oh, by the way, if you would like to come to California, we're quite open to having 10 cities. Do you know what I've noticed? I have noticed. Okay, so I went downtown on Skid Row, my mistake, uh, because I was looking for a certain store to get some concoctions. I'm going to put new stuff up on the website too. I am making for Christmas, probably really for the end of Halloween, um, a cleanse, an energy bath cleanse. So I was looking for some of my ingredients from some of the stores, okay, downtown LA. And I was talking to little Kenna on the phone when I was driving down there and I was on a rant about something, which is what I do. 27 million people, yeah, that's what it says on online, if we can believe that. So anyway, I was on, yes, I'm going to do channeling videos. I'm such, I, I'm trying to get my mind wrapped around it. I'm just trying to get my personality and mind out of my butt. Uh, okay, so anyway, I went downtown and I was on Skid Row. So I was by Santee Alley and I was on Los Angeles Street and I had to go around the corner, right? Well, 20, we've got 10 million less. You got a whole country of Canada. This is Southern California. Los Angeles has that many people as your entire country. Think about that for a second. Less space too, okay? So I went downtown, turned the corner and I'm going to Kenna. Oh my God, it's a one-way street. I got to go around and around. I pull up to a stop sign. Now, everybody is on the sidewalks. Just like by our city hall, the tents are crazy. So everybody is camping, basically. They are cooking on the streets. They are shitting on the streets. They are laughing and having a party on the streets, right? So, oh, you were named after Lake Louise? So beautiful, you must be beautiful. It's just horrific. So what did I pull up on at the stop sign? <laughs> I pulled up on a porta potty, a porta potty that was overflowing into the street. And I was like, oh my God, I am in hell. This should not be happening. What is happening? What? No, I'm serious. I was talking to Ken on the phone. I was like, oh my God, I have to turn my head away, but I can't because I'm that kind of person. I'm like, let me stare at it and look at everybody. Why is our mayor, our governor taking money for the homeless and no garbage? The first thing that you need to do with people that are addicts and crazy and whatever that won't clean up their rooms, won't clean up their whatever, you need to keep your streets clean. It's imperative. Once you let it degrade like this, you are never cleaning that. Never. No, I'm not joking you. I should have taken a picture, but I was so grossed out. Like it was... No, if I showed you Skid Row, here's the problem. I'm 20 miles from Skid Row as in I'm over the hill. I'm in the valley. I'm not on the Hollywood side. My neighborhood, not like right where I live, but going out and shopping, you're going to see this. Their tents are out on the side of the street and they don't care. They're, you are walk, your kids are walking by them. Everybody's walking by them. They are on the street. Their tents are there. Their sleeping bags are there. They are on the street. They're on the fucking street. All over the street. Now, I don't care, but... I cannot and will not tolerate the garbage. The garbage is outrageous. They, every garbage bin in North Hollywood is pretty much overflowing. Where's the garbage? We pay our taxes. Why are they not cleaning? They can do their route. They don't have to go get people's stuff. Oh, it's terrible. I am living in a flop house. I'm not personally, but it's a flop house. It is unbelievable. I've, I'm, I'm at a loss actually, and it's not going to go back. It's not going to go back. It's it, what is Sebastian Bach in a tent out in the side lot? <laughs> I have no idea. Um, yeah, it's, um, <laughs> it's, um, 
<laughs> Sebastian Bach. He put a tent up, put a tent up on the side of the street. No, <laughs> it's just really bad. But it's not just, I was in Sherman Oaks. I was outside of the shops there. I went in the back and their garbages are all overflowed. Like it's not, I don't know what's going on. No, oh, he's not going to clean up. No one's cleaning up. Yeah, no, it's, I don't even know what to say. I don't know what to say. I am horrified. Nina, I mean, I'll go to the grocery store tonight. I'll walk down the street. I'll get out of my car and I will pass many people with their tents on the street. Yeah, <laughs> we should make yoga. Yeah, I know. That guy, right? Oh my God. Mayor Nutjob. I, no, it doesn't make sense. The only reason they would allow that kind of filth is because you are trying to encourage a certain behind kind of behavior. I'm very sad about New York. I mean, I don't even know what to say. The, it, but, it, but they want to the, understand in a spiritual war, in a spiritual war, the degradation of the human being is what they want. It's degradation, okay? Degradation. Degradation. Once your surroundings are ruined, then you don't care. Once your body is ruined, then you don't care. Horrific. And they, no, they're just taking the money. That's all they're doing. They're just fucking taking the money. What do they care? Ah, the, I don't know why the prices are so high. Cause I guess people like to live in a toilet. I don't know. It's very, you, it's very like, it's un, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. You'd have to see it. Yeah. They want us to do, I don't know what they want though. I can't. I the only thing I can think of is the porta potty should have been taken maybe to the governor's house and put in his living room, you know, or I don't know. I don't know what to say, but it's unfreaking believable. Wonder if people got well, that's what they're getting sick from. They got typhus running. Come on, that's what they're getting sick from. They're not getting sick from what everybody says they're getting. Oh, I know, right? Canada Customs Airport. <laughs> Oh my God. I know. It's just really, I don't know. Yep. That's right. Scott Bayo has a YouTube channel and complains about all, all of this. Exact. Well, cause he lives here somewhere. He's driving through it. It's in every neighbor. It's in every neighborhood. It's in Burbank. Burbank is his private city. Why are they not doing it? It's not as bad, but it's happening. It's happening. And they're taking the top of the mountains of the Verdugos and they're smushing them down. You know they're going to let some rich foreigner go up there and buy that property, which is city property. It's what they're doing. They're taking away our hiking lands and everything, just like they did the beaches. That's what they're doing. Just saying. Don't say I didn't say it. All right, you guys. Oh, my God. I am must lie down now because I ate too much, and that's it. Oh, no. Austin is turning into a tent city, too. Eee. Okay, you guys. Um, yeah, it's terrible. I'm going to do my best. I say this every night, but I mean it. And to Catalina and your son, I hope I say it right, Jose Martinez. I hope I said that right. Everybody say a prayer for her son, for her to get the strength to do what she needs to do in her life with her 16-year-old and for her son. Everybody that wants to. And of course, for Baby Jack, Baby Jack Rascal. And thank you guys for all your donations. Jackie, if you're there, thank you so much. Um, Baby Jack, Baby Jack Rascal. So great. So thank you so much, you guys. I will let you know on Monday I will be back. I will be in touch. And I will talk to you guys later. Everybody, have a good night. Try to stay off the streets in downtown LA because you may not know where you end up. Just saying. Um, <laughs> bye, you guys. Mwah. Bye. Bye, you guys. Thank you all. Oh, God. Thank you all so much. Bye, guys.